Hey, I'm TJ Schwanke and welcome to Outdoor Quest TV. On today's episode, we're headed high into the mountains on a sheep hunt, but it's a sheep hunt with a twist. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about case prep and in particular case trimming. Now, one of the most common questions we get is how often should you trim your cases? So each time we fire around, the brass on the case stretches slightly. So if you look in your reloading manual, it's going to give you your maximum and minimum case lengths. So what we want to do is make sure our brass falls within that. So typically in a hunting rifle, you know, you may only trim every five or 10 reloads. Obviously, you know, you want to measure each time, but as long as they fall within those specs, you're good to go. But with some of the more precision long range rifles, I actually like to trim after every shot that's been fired out of a case. And the reason for that is even with that slight stretch, now we're starting to get more neck tension on the bullet. The longer that neck gets, the more tension it puts on that bullet. And that can alter our point of impact ever so slightly. So you know what? On an average hunting rifle, not a big deal. On a precision long range rig, it can be a big deal. Now, one of the reasons that most people don't trim as often as they should is it can be a real pain in the butt to do, but Hornady's Case Prep Center here has really simplified things, and I'll show you how simple it is to use. So first thing we're gonna do, we've got a 7.8 case here, and it's been resized, deprimed, and it's been cleaned. So now what I wanna do is just measure my overall length. So if I look at my, in here, Looks like I'm about five thou over length. So I've got my shell holder in here. I've got my pilot down here that's correct for this. We can change those for each cartridge. And I'm just gonna slip this in and lock it. Now what we're gonna do is turn this on. And I'm gonna bring that down. I'm just gonna see if it contacts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep putting it down until it starts to contact. I'm only looking at taking 5 thousandths of an inch off here, so I don't want to take too much. There, we can just see it's just starting to cut now. So I'll pull it up. What we're going to do is just measure that again. And man, that's right on. So sometimes you have to do it a couple times. Just take little tiny bits and get it exactly where you want. So now that that's set, I can do as many cases as I want in a row here. So the great thing about the case prep center is I pull it out of there run it in my chamfer tools I just want to take the slight rough edges off there and put it in my case brush and my primer pocket cleaner and that's as simple as it is next one put it in there and just trim it take it out take the burrs off. You don't want to do too much here. We're just taking the burrs off. Clean it out inside and there. So you can see that you can do an awful lot of cases in a really short amount of time here. So a great time saver and ultimately it will help improve your accuracy, especially on those precision long range rifles. Well, let's go sheep hunting. So for those who've never been to Africa, I think people think all Africa is the same and it isn't. Even South Africa, where we are right now, is just so vastly different. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize they've got big, big mountains here and that's where we're headed today. We're headed up into the mountains and we're gonna be hunting two iconic mountain species. We're gonna be hunting Barbary sheep and we're gonna be hunting Cape Mountain zebra. Now, Vanessa and I were here a few years ago and both took great Barbary rams and we saw these just magnificent Cape Mountain zebra up there. There was no season for them at the time. So the season has since opened and we're really, really excited about that. Um, our friend Greg Sakovich is gonna be hunting Barbary sheep as well. So we're gonna follow him along. A little twist on what we're doing tonight is we're gonna be camping up there and the temperatures are supposed to go well into the minus temperatures. So we're about 7,000 feet up there. This is actually true mountain hunting. As you can see, they're putting the camp together behind us. It's gonna be a typical mountain hunt other than Man, we got a lot of gear, so looks like we're going to be comfortable up there. But it's going to be a truly unique hunt, something I've never seen on television before. <laughs> you practiced, eh? Thank you. 
For us, the kill does not define the hunt. For us, the hunt is about the journey. Join us on our journey. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. Sacco Antica Firearms, demand perfection. Zeiss, we make it visible. Loa Boots, simply more. Silver Willow Taxidermy, see the difference. Closed captioning, provided by Deluxe Wall Tents, made in Canada for Canadian conditions. So we were just driving in, we're probably only another 15 minutes from where we're gonna set camp up. And uh, we spotted a big herd of um, stallion zebra earlier. And now we just spotted a small band of sheep just across the way here and there's a big ram in it. So it's kind of one of those bird in the hand things. We were gonna get camp set up and everything and then go hunting. But uh, when you see a big ram, it turns from a camping trip to a hunting trip. So I think they're just gonna take a little closer look at him with the spotting scope now and see what he looks like. But uh, he sure looked good to me. You never know when you're hunting what's going to happen, but you just look around here. This is some rugged, rugged country here. It is truly sheep country and not much else. Those zebras have kind of eked out a bit of a living here and a few vol ray buck, and that's kind of it. This, this is sheep country. We're just gonna head up and over this ridge here. See if we can get on them. That was quick, Greg. Very quick. Not even in camp yet.
Well, Greg, it looks like he gave us the slip. <clears throat> nice round. Took off from the rest, and uh, we don't know what happened to him. We still go far. Yeah. We'll find him tomorrow, if not today. It's such a perfect stock that we got right in on the group. and Perfect. A perfect shot if he was there. No. That sheep went in for you. I don't know what happened to that man. Unless he, he went around here first. So unless he didn't stop and just the female stopped and he beat us around the side. But he wasn't in there. In the, when we first saw him, he was in there. He's definitely not in there now. So let's stick to our original plan and go and set up camp. <laughs> it was too good to be true. Yes. Outdoor Quest TV is brought to you by Defense Aerosols, Bear Spray, for when your life depends on it. Safari Club International Canada, first for hunters. Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine. Midland Radios, communication for every adventure. Well, Don, what do you think about camping in uh, Africa? Well, so far, so good. Yeah, because you got somebody else to do it. Always <laughs> <laughs> well, good that way. We found a flat spot, so that's half the battle already. We got um, we got less firewood, and we got brandy, so we should be good, right? And it's actually a beautiful night. It is. Sun's out. We've got blue sky. It's not too windy. It's going to be a good night. Awesome. No, it's just caught here. There you go. This one seems more along this one. So we got camp all set up. Uh, tent here for Donna, Greg, and us. And Edward and Ray get to snuggle a little bit tonight. But too cool camping in Africa. This isn't something that they normally do here, but uh, they indulged us a little bit. And what better than to have a sheep camp uh, in Africa, especially. So just getting the fire going out there. Maybe have a few brandies around the fire tonight, but we'll be right up hunting. You know, we know there's sheep and zebra right over that hill. We know there's sheep up in there. We know there's sheep up on that mountain. So we're just right in the heart of it. I don't know. It's pretty amazing. I'm almost speechless. Like it's pretty cool what we're doing here. Not many people get to do this. So one thing when you're hunting with Ray, you never waste a minute of time hunting. So we've got about an hour and 15 minutes before dark. So now we just climb up this ridge behind us. We sent one of the trackers over the ridge that way. So he's going to see if there's anything over there for the morning. We're just going to head up here and you never know. In Africa, there could be bullets flying, but at least we'll kind of know what's going on for tomorrow. Let's go. There's a whole herd of black wildebeest just beneath us here, so I don't have a clue we're here. This area was high fenced um, probably till the 90s. A lot of these animals were brought in here in the 60s. Um, the Barbary sheep that are here aren't native to South Africa, they are native to Africa, but um, they came from Chad and they were brought in here in the 60s and the farm kind of fell into a bit of disrepair. The fences kind of came down and it started being used for cattle and sheep and stuff like that. So these sheep have expanded like right across this whole range and they got black wildebeest, um, there's wild ray buck here, there's fallow, there's a lot of fallow deer, which you know, definitely not native to Africa, but you know, again, were brought in probably in the mid 1800s to Africa. So um, they've actually been declared a native species now. That's how long they've been here, but check out these wildebeest. We just spotted a group of sheep down at the bottom here. Looks like they probably just went down for water and they're heading back up now. There's one ram right in the middle that looks really big. So Edward got the spotting scope on these sheep and uh, that one around looks good. He looks good through the binos, so. You can just tell his body's twice the size of everything there. They are headed up is the only problem, but. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop right into the bottom and the bottom, there's just quite a bit of cover down there and that'll put us in the um, shadows as well and then hopefully go along the bottom and hopefully they don't climb too much 
and then hopefully we can get right on them and Greg can get a shot. This segment is brought to you by Stony Creek Hunting Gear. It's in the blood. Take the shot. All right. That's why we're on sheep lights at night, man. And down. Way to go, Greg. Thank you. That's awesome. It's one of the big things here in Africa is taking really good photos of your animals. And we're taking the time to do it. We still have to walk way over there, but we'll uh, get some good photos. These will last a lifetime. Oops, I slipped down the hill here. I think the plan is we're just going to got them tonight because Edward said he's an expert at it. And <laughs> then we're going to uh, just leave here and come back get them in the morning. So we still got a half an hour or so walk out of here. Can, and I, can I just grab a few? Just rain's coming in and we're probably going to get wet before we get back. What do you think, Don? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. For me, it's three times the walk down. So yeah. What? We well, shouldn't wait too much longer. You, four foot nine? No, I'm five foot even. Thank five. you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> So did you ever imagine Africa was going to be 
big mountains with sheep in them and things like that? No, because last time I saw it, it was flat and nothing but sand. Yeah, it's this a, is a very different experience. Isn't it? It's amazing. We really wanted you guys to see these mountains. I think they're one of the most amazing places in Africa. The scenery is just, yeah. They don't look, you know, when you look up at a mountain, you're like, oh, it's not bad. And then you start the up and you know, when you go up, you got to come down. But the cool thing is, <laughs> once we get down there, we don't have to drive back. That's true. We have a nice camp set up down there. Ray's got the fire going. Can't wait. Yeah. A few more photos. Guess we're heading out in the dark, eh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dark's a relative term. For more information on free range hunting on the Eastern Cape of South Africa with Lalapa Safaris, check them out online at lalapasafaris.co.za. Outdoor Quest TV is also brought to you by these fine sponsors.